Hi, sweet friends. Lissa here for a very, very special Lissa video. Today I want to talk about why I am a vegan. This is a very important subject to me because this decision changed my life. Um, my life is so much different now and so beautiful and compassionate and peaceful. And I want to share that with you on this, my two years as a raw vegan anniversary. The health benefits that I've experienced over the last two years have been incredible. Um, my brain is sharper, my vision hasn't gotten worse, my hair is awesome, my nails are nice and hard, uh, the whites of my eyes are whiter, my teeth are nice and white, um, my acne has gone away, my skin's cleared up and is super nice and soft. Um, my circulation's improved, my metabolism has improved, I'm no longer freezing cold all the time when I'm eating even cooked food. I'm actually warm. Um, I've been told when I give hugs that I feel like I'm a furnace. <laughs> so my metabolism's quite high. I eat a lot, I get a lot of nutrition, my hormones have balanced, my sleep has improved. Oh my gosh, my joints feel better. Um, my like when I do exercise, which is fairly rare, <laughs> but I have more endurance, I have more strength, I can do more things, my creativity has expanded, I feel more compassion, I feel more peaceful, I can handle stress so much better. Uh, <laughs> I could go on and on and on. Also, I lost 70 pounds, so yes, I did that too. Um, I'm gonna insert my picture right here for you guys to watch, but all of these things that I've experienced over the last two years has been absolutely incredible. My life has changed very dramatically from a year ago. Um, I'm no longer with my husband. Um, I've moved out. I've traveled. I've gone to Costa Rica. Um, I want to expand my business. I want to do retreats and I want to, you know, do more coaching with you guys. Uh, I want to release more books. I have so many more recipes in my brain that I want to release. I have a journey book that I want to release that I'm trying to get out for you guys. But there's just so much has happened over the last year that I, I just feel, I feel blessed. I feel, despite going through a lot of stress, I feel blessed where I am in my life. And I wanted to talk to you guys about why I am a vegan. Health benefits aside, which I just went through, um, I'm going to give you the reasons why I decided to become a vegan and why I hold it so strong in my heart. I am a vegan for the animals, first and foremost, always, forever. I will be a vegan for the rest of my life and it doesn't matter if, you know, I come across, maybe I come across some health issues in the future, who knows? Again, raw vegans aren't immune to anything. We are just healthier than the average person. I don't expect myself to live forever, obviously, but if anything ever came up where I was nutritionally deficient in something or whatever, I would never default to animal products. I would never, you know, succumbed to the requests from medical practitioners to eat animal products because I need them in, you know, to be healthy. I would always, always default to something vegan and try to figure out where I would be lacking my nutrition before I would ever touch an animal product. I am vegan for the animals. The ethics are so important to me. I don't want to be part of the harm. I don't want to be part of any of that. And there, in my mind, there is no such thing as humanely killing something. You can't humanely kill something because you're killing it. It doesn't matter if you're doing it nicely or not. If somebody was humanely killing your own child, you would not think that that was humane. You, you just wouldn't. It's not something that we, you know, we do, it's a, just a justification. That's all it is, and I can't be part of that. So for me personally, that is such a huge motivator to be vegan. And again, I'm raw for my health. I am not really raw for any other reason, but I am vegan for the animals specifically. The health benefits, the weight loss, all that good stuff was all a side effect of my decision to become a vegan. I have more compassion and peace. I feel that animals resonate differently with me now. Um, they are more likely to come up to me. Birds come closer to me. Butterflies come closer to me. Um, animals are much more in tune with me. I can. It's, it feel, I feel more connected to life itself, and I love that feeling. I feel much more at peace in nature, um, and I don't know why that is. It's definitely an energetic feeling that I feel. 
Uh, it's definitely something that I would never trade for anything. No piece of bacon is going to make me <laughs> want to change that, that's for sure. I am also raw vegan for the environment. I really highly recommend for the ethics side to go watch a movie called Earthlings. Um, you can find that earthlings.com. It's a very, very powerful movie. It goes over the five reasons why people should be a vegan. Um, the ethics, the environment, um, scientific research, the pet industry, the zoo industry, and all of that, you know, um, stuff. But the Earthlings is a really good movie to watch for the ethics. But for the environmental aspect, check out Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy.com, but the movie is also on Netflix, so you can go watch that. But it takes 2,000 to 2,500 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. When you want to take a look at the comparison to that, that's about, you know, the average shower is about 15 to 20 gallons of water. It depends how long you take the shower for, but <laughs> you would have to take 30 plus showers to make up for a quarter pounder. That's a lot of showers that you're going to need to take <laughs> to compensate for that one burger that you have from McDonald's or whatever. It is really, really hard on the environment. We're wasting water on growing grains and feeding the waters. I mean, they drink something like 30 gallons a day. So, you know, they're drinking a lot of water, we're watering their food, and then on top of that, they're eating all of this food that we are basically plowing down the rainforests so that we can grow crops for, you know, ethanol for one, but also for animal feed. It's one of the biggest polluters consuming animal products of all. So I highly recommend watching that movie to get more information on that. Um, if you are trying to save water, taking quicker showers, recycling your plastic, you know, taking your little, um, you know, uh, fabric bags to the grocery store to pack your food in, yeah, you're making, uh, but you're making a little tiny impact on the environment. The biggest thing that you can possibly do for the earth is to be a vegan, is to, even if you don't go full vegan, even if you cut down your meat and you were only eating meat a couple times a week, and then eventually once a week, and then eventually none, the whole point is to cut your intake down. Animal products of all kinds, so all meats, all dairy, all eggs, all of that. You know, cut it down. It's going to benefit you in so many other ways. It's going to benefit the planet. And this is why I do not eat animal products because I don't want to be part of the pollution. I don't want to be giving my money to those people um, to cause problems for the planet. I'm so more, much more connected to the earth and I don't want to be part of that. I, I just, I feel so much better not. <laughs> Another one, why is world hunger? This is something that most people don't really connect with veganism, but with veganism, you are actually helping with world hunger because all of the grain that we're growing to feed our cattle and other animals could be used to feed people. We could be using it to feed all of the starving people that need food in your own city. We have so many starving people all over the place that need food. But you know, when you're eating animal products, we're using so many resources to create these animal products that we're forgetting about the people that need the most. It takes about 12 pounds of grain. I've heard it averages 10 to 17. I've seen online different various um, articles I've read. So we'll just say between 10 and 17 pounds of grain to produce one pound of meat or animal products. You don't see somebody eating 12 pounds of grain twice a day. You, it's just impossible. We are using so much of those resources when we could be allocating them to starving people and to ourselves. We should be eating that food instead of growing food for the animals. Plus, if you go over to become grass-fed, uh, purchasers and you buy meat from farmers and they're grass-fed, if the whole world did that, we would need more planets to compensate for the amount of grazing land that these animals need because organics and grass-fed need about three times more land to graze on than factory farmed animals. And that's why we have factory farms because we can't justify having them graze all over the place. We just don't have enough room, we don't have enough land, we don't have enough meadows. Uh, with grass for these cows to be on. So 95% of all meat purchased 
is all factory farmed. Only 5% is actually purchased at local farmers markets and local, you know, or hunted or anything like that. Because think about it. How many times do you actually buy organic or hunted meat? It's quite rare. You don't actually always buy it. A lot of people will tell me when I tell them I'm a vegan, they say, oh, well, all I, all I buy is organic grass fed, but that's impossible. We can't do that. It's just not, everybody's not buying organic grass fed meat and it's super expensive. Unless you make like so much money, you can't afford to always be buying organic grass fed. And if you eat out, you're probably not getting organic unless you go to a specific restaurant. But then again, you're spending a lot of money on that food. So again, it helps with world, world hunger and I'm all pro feeding the people. So I think that we could be expending our resources in much better ways than on animal products. Another reason why I'm vegan is that it cuts your disease rates down way low. Um, you can check out the movie Forks Over Knives at ForksOverKnives.com or on Netflix. You can check that movie out. It talks about all the health implications of consuming animal products. I would like to prevent disease as much as I can and through all the research that I've read, being a vegan is the best way to go. There is also a book called Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis and How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. These are two vegan doctors that I follow and I absolutely adore all they're doing for the vegan movement, for the planet, and for everybody's health. They are, you know, getting all of that information out there for us to read and it's very, very important for us to learn and how to decrease our chances of getting sick. Being a vegan changes your gut flora, your, your ecology in your colon. Uh, the more fiber you eat, the more you feed the fiber thriving bacteria and it, with time, it'll decrease your gas and bloating. I rarely, if ever, have gas or bloating and if I do, it's probably because I've sat at my computer all day and you know, you didn't have any chance for um, my food to move around and get going in there. But other than that, I really have almost zero gas. I never get bloated. Um, it's really, really, really nice to feel that way. I don't get constipated anymore because I eat so much fiber. Um, it's just a oh, beautiful way to live, you guys. You, I can't even explain it. Um, and also anti-aging, obviously. All of the blue zones that live the longest have the highest plant-based to animal product ratio. So they eat the most plant-based. A lot of them are closest to vegan as possible. They will have a little bit of animal products here and there, but really it's only for celebrations and you're probably only eating this much <laughs> just for the celebration. So eating plants lengthens, has been known to lengthen your telomeres, um, the little ends of your DNA that, you know, shave down as you age. Um, there has been recent studies showing that eating a plant-based diet can either lengthen or, you know, prevent the degradation of your telomeres, which is really important for, again, anti-aging. I'm going to be 37 coming up here soon, and a lot of people always tell me that I look like I'm in my early 20s, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm getting up there, <laughs> getting close to 40, but I don't feel that way, so that's all that matters. But I wanted to go over these reasons with you because it's so important to me and I am so blessed that I made this decision for myself and again, I'm a raw vegan for my health. Uh, I don't, you know, if you don't want to be a raw vegan, that's cool, but I really highly suggest you look into cutting out all of your animal products. Even if you eat cooked vegan, you're still making a great impact on your health. I believe that raw is just a step beyond. The more raw you eat, the more life you have in your body the easier it is to digest and the less blockage you have so that your body can detox and clean and be young and youthful and awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like and subscribe to my channel to get notifications for more. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Lissa's Raw Food Romance and on Instagram as well at Raw Food Romance. And again, I'm on Snapchat. You can go follow me over there. I share snips of my day and what I eat sometimes. Lisa Robbigan, so go check that out. Uh, I'm gonna go work on my book. It's been two years, I'm starting my third year as a raw vegan. I'm so excited to continue this journey and especially to share it with all of you. I love you so much. I love all your comments and big hugs and big thank you to everybody who follows me, um, shares my stuff, likes my stuff, and is just a really awesome friend. I've met so many amazing people over the last two years and I know I'm gonna meet so many amazing more people. 
as time goes on. So um, big hugs to all of you and thanks for watching this epically long video. <laughs> but I love you all and till the next time, fruit on.